Hey everyone, uh, welcome to today's live stream. I'm really excited about this one. Uh, we're going to be talking about one of my absolute favorite projects uh, that's still ongoing, and we're going to use deep learning and MATLAB, obviously, to recognize um, animals from uh, the wild, basically. So that's why we called it MATLAB in the wild. So um, this is going to be really interactive. We have uh, Connell is here joining me to help out with some questions. So um, anything that you're wondering or any ideas that you have, please put them in the chat. Um, and then we'll, you know, talk about them as we, you know, get to it. So we'll take some breaks and, um, you know, answer questions and have a lot of fun. So uh, basically, you know, the idea here is that we're um, trying to figure out what kind of animal, you know, it is uh, from trail cameras. So this is a really, really interesting project. There's, um, we'll share the link in the chat. Um, and Cleve actually just wrote an article about this. So um, this, yeah, we'll share the link, uh, but it actually goes through the project quite a lot and um, talks about where the data come from and um, talk about, you know, the partners in the project. So before I go any further, um, hopefully they're in the chat or they'll be watching at some point. Um, but, you know, uh, Cleve obviously and uh, Jim Sanderson, um, who is the main researcher that we've been working with, um, who collects the images and the, the team, you know, labels the images and is, quite, you know, in, involved and engaged uh, in, you know, what we can actually do with this in the end. So, um, you know, we've been working on this for, well, I guess it was a few months ago we were working more. Um, but the idea, we have this uh, trail camera data from um, a couple of different sites in the U.S., like southwestern U.S. So Cleve made a nice uh, map. Well, and that's not showing up right, but that's okay. Uh, a nice map of where these animals or where the uh, trail cameras are set up. So. I'll show just a couple of images uh, just to give an idea of what these things look like. So for one thing, um, I think this is probably the most challenging part of the project. You'll uh, hear a lot more about how I basically took a whole bunch of credit for taking a dog example and um, you know modding it slightly to get a really good model. Um, but so we'll talk about you know how we actually can make sense all, of uh, all these things and you know some of the, the uh, questions that we ran into. So uh, these are from the different sites. One that's really interesting is the ranch site. Uh, it's actually, Cleve talks about it, and it's actually Ted Turner's ranch. So if you're watching, hey, Ted. Um, and thanks for your ranch data. Uh, but there's, anyways, they're, they're unlabeled. That's a really interesting part of it. So uh, you know, we could use our model to try to label these images and find out what they are. So uh, otherwise, we have labels. Um, and I'll show just a couple. So they're uh, set by sites and by the probably correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Jim or anybody in the chat, uh, but then um, by camera, I believe, and uh, then by animal. So bears are my favorite. I don't have any bears in this one. Um, let's look at this one. <laughs> they're, by, they're the best. But so there's a bunch of images. We actually have a couple of terabytes uh, in whole. And uh, we, you know, before even COVID happened, we were mailing it around uh, because it was, you know, very challenging to work with. So uh, you get a sense of how the images are also labeled. They're labeled by time of day and um, the number of animals in the image. So there's a lot of uh, really rich data, especially, I'll see if I can zoom in anymore here. Um, you know, you see, oh, two little guys. That's the other best part of this project. It's so super fun just looking at them and watching the animals. But so they have um, usually usually some kind of watering hole set up uh, for, you know, and then the picture is taken based on uh, movement. That'll be important later. So um, let's actually have a script here that was just an outline for myself, basically, <laughs> uh, so I don't go completely off uh, the other best part track of and talk about how awesome this project is. Um, but so yeah, we had, uh, you know, you saw the, how that was organized, you saw that uh, there is quite a lot. And um, we had, you know, there are a whole bunch of different types, I'm not sure exactly how many total, but there are many, many um, species. Uh, and you know, we, we didn't want to just start right away with, uh, you know, the just try labeling hundreds of animals. So um, we had a couple of ideas of, of how to get started. Uh, some things that, you know, I'll kind of talk a little bit about uh, later, but um, some things we were kind of concerned about at first were uh, what we called ghosts, not like actually like a haunted, I don't know, animal park or something. But, um, you know, at the time, whenever maybe a leaf 
uh, blue by or something, and there's no actual animal in the image. So, you know, one thing would be interesting is to be able to detect that. Um, but, you know, to be able to differentiate between something that like a little snake or something that's just barely there, like those, those were some questions we had. And then also the time of day, you noticed there were many uh, dark images where, you know, the um, eyes are coming out or, you know, and there's others that are the time of day. And um, furthermore, which I thought was kind of interesting, uh, you know, these are the same animals kind of moving around. So, you know, it might be interesting to sort of track, uh, you know, <laughs> figure out what they're doing. At least I, rec I recognize that um, a family of bears, you know, every day or so uh, comes to the same whole watering hole and they play around in the water and it's like the best project ever. Uh, okay, so anyways, the uh, time of day we thought might be important um, or maybe have be challenging to classify. And then also partial animals. Um, there are lots of times where, you know, you get sort of a large part of something that may be indistinguishable to human. You know, how could this model figure this out? So a couple of things we wanted to try again, we didn't want to just you know, go all out and try every single species. So uh, I, I don't know, I thought it was fun to see a, like whether something was a bear or not. You know, we, we talked about originally uh, with uh, Jim, Cleve, Joanna, and I, um, oh my gosh, I forgot to talk about Joanna. Joanna is also part of this project, I think. And I'm sorry if I forgot you in the beginning when I was talking about Cleve and Jim. Uh, so she also, uh, you know, was uh, involved in this very beginning, mailing the images around and trying to come up with uh, these you know, model ideas. But so we were all emailing and trying to come up, uh, you know, we're thinking ghost bears was one thing that sticks, sticks out in my mind, you know, could it detect ghost bears versus bear? Uh, and I was camping recently and I could have really used uh, that <laughs> kind of functionality to see if I should go outside or not. Um, <laughs> the other one I just sort of tried was type of sheep. Like there's Barbary sheep and um, bighorn sheep and they looked totally the same to me, but the model could totally tell, which is awesome. And then we tried uh, 10 species and then scaled up to 40. And that's what Cleve uh, writes about in the article. So you can follow along with there. Um, the other thing that, that I wanted to mention is there, in some of them, there were only like four images of that kind of animal. Um, you know, the one uh, I think that Cleve mentions in the article is uh, the uh, Nilgai. No, I'm definitely saying that wrong. Um, the but Nilgai. they're Nilgai. <laughs> You Thank go. you, Connell. This is what I, this, oh, this is what I need you for. I forget there are like people here. This is amazing uh, to correct me and help me. So, uh, but they're pretty rare, you know. So we don't have as many of those as we have deer and um, others uh, things like that. So, um, anyways, we wanted to uh, just kind of make sure that we're using enough. You know, if you imagine, uh, if you think of deep learning as like a human would learn. If you have seen a whole bunch of um, bears in your life and all of a sudden a black dog walked by, but you only had ever seen one black dog before, you would probably think that was a bear. I don't know. I'm just making this up on the fly. But so those are the kinds of things we were thinking about, you know, just to, to get started. And then, of course, I, you know, we didn't, there are many, many images. We didn't want to just jump right in, you know, so what are kind of the right, what's like the right proportion to test with? And then, of course, we used GPUs, which... Um, may or may not be why I'm involved in the project. <laughs> I have a GPU, <laughs> but I'll take it because this is the best. Um, so ultimately we uh, used, so again, talking about all these different options, uh, Joanna is actually a, a really uh, deep expert in <laughs> deep learning and uh, image uh, processing and image stuff. So, um, you know, we, we, she recommended the uh, transfer learning um, doc example, which we'll also throw in the chat. Oh, I already had it open. Oh man, sorry guys. So uh, we, I literally just did this, opened it up and like modified a couple of things. Like, I'm not joking. I, I should be like t talking about how I have like a PhD and I did deep learning and all this great stuff. And I'm so important to this project. Um, but the reality is I just copied and pasted. <laughs> so um, really, we just ultimately followed along and we used, I was trying to find this part, we used the uh, Inception V3 network. So instead of whatever this example uses, we used uh, Inception V3. So this is available in MATLAB. It's um, mad easy to just like, uh, if you just type it in, you'll get a, a link uh, to download it. Um, and you can also find on GitHub and stuff. But what's cool is that, you know, this was already trained on by 
experts on ImageNet on you know many 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 images, uh, and we can just take that and run with it. So that's a really great way to um, to approach these, especially with images. They're very very good models, and we can just adjust the classification learner or <laughs> classification layer. Uh, that was yesterday um, to um, have our uh, classes or you know our labels in it. So that's all we did pretty much. Heather, I, I, I just yeah. want to hop in real quick. Are, are, are there any benefits to using transfer learning versus, say, building your own network from scratch? Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, an, I'm clearly not an expert. I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer that sort of tries to dabble in deep learning every now and then. But uh, well, are, like you are, just are, made a video. Come on. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, when, when you're at the math folks, you're kind of an expert on, on, on everything, <laughs> I guess. So just, 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 just knowing how wide our tool set is. But, right. But, but, uh, but, but I'm curious. Do, do, do you think there's um, th there's any benefits to going either either way? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I think, especially in this case, we actually had quite a lot of images, so we probably could have built up our own. But um, it's much much faster to take something that already exists and sure. then you know tweak and tune. Uh, so I, I think, especially if you don't have a lot of images, like transfer learning is a great way to start. Uh, and, um, if you don't, if you don't have a lot of expertise, like if you don't know what the <laughs> layer, all the layers mean, and you're not sure, you know, yeah. you can start with it and then just pop it into the old app and you can dig in even more. So, um, I think that's nice. Cause a lot of times you just are like, uh, I don't know. I don't know where to start. Like what layers do I need? What, yeah. thing, you know, it just, it can take a long time, but you know, it depends on your, also your goal. You know, if you want to just kind of get something quick and see if this is even sure. reasonable, just use somebody else's work and go from there. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's the Might world, well, right? right? Just, yeah, I mean. Plagiarism for the do. win. Right, exactly. It's just Google things. It's like software, software development 101. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> See what exists already. Uh, so yeah, that's, I think also images are a great one. There's also some nice models out there for audio, but, uh, you know, because, you know, you need so many images and there are so many images out there and like Google, Facebook, like all these, you know, places that have tons of images you know, and expertise, why not just go from there and then add yeah. your own expertise where that is the, you know, uh, like Jim and uh, Grant and his team that will be making sense of all this and being like, well, why is this, this doesn't make sense. Maybe we should go back and see if there's something we can do with a convolution or whatever. Sure. Um, so anyway, uh, all right, I won't get to you. <laughs> I won't show too many apps here uh, to get <laughs> off track, but, uh, but that's one good thing. You can always go back in and, um, you know, tweak and tune if it doesn't seem to be working. But in this case, it worked really well <laughs> not to do that. Um, good. There were other uh, questions. Um, I think there was a question on um, how do you use other pre-trained models? Uh, you know, there's a couple of examples. So uh, actually, oh, there's, if you go to, oh, I'm just going to Google it. Uh, <laughs> I just typed Google when I wrote Google. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm such a jerk. Okay. Um, the deep learning models are all available um, here. So you can also check in the uh, um, add-on explorer, but there's a link. This isn't the right one. Uh, there's a link for a list of all the different models that are available. And then you can use, um, clearly, <laughs> I'm not good at Googling. Yeah, so you, you, can also, you can also just download them from, from within that deep learning designer app, which or, or deep network designer app, which, which you had open a couple of seconds ago. Um, Thanks, Connell. That would have saved 37 yeah. bucks. <laughs> they're, they're right there. They're, they're all right there. Uh, there I, I, go. <laughs> I, 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 I still think you, you you actually need to like download them every time you um, every time you want to use a new model. But I, once you have it installed, you should be good to go. Yeah, uh, if you like mouse over, you see the, uh, maybe you can see, I don't know, the network not installed, add, use add-on explorer. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's a good way to do it. And I was also going to add uh, from this. Yeah, there's also like if you have a model from a colleague that they you know put on Onyx or you know like a TensorFlow or Cafe or whatever, uh, you, there's like importers and exporters for those. So you can there's a lot of ways to share models because that's kind of like we said that's the name of the game here. Yeah. Uh, when talking about doing these things, if you don't have years and years to spend on it, um, <laughs> these are also just like my notes. But uh, I. <laughs> One thing that, again, this is so maybe embarrassing. I don't know, like the whole world of YouTube should know, but like, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm a deep learning researcher over here. Like, let me take this doc example and tweak all my parameters and the batch sizes and my GPU settings and blah, 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 blah. And I just was like, 
let me just try all the defaults. And I literally deleted anything that was extra and I used the defaults and it was a really brilliant model. There you go. And I was like, oh, no wonder we have those dev teams and all those <laughs> researchers and experts and everything. Like, shoot, I should use them more. Yeah. All right, that's good. Hey, so, so, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes going with your gut just works. Or sometimes, you know, you know, yeah, so mistakes are are, are 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 the best solutions. Sometimes <laughs> I, I yeah. stumbled over something by accident. That's that's always a good thing. Exactly, and um, you know, in these things, there's a lot of options for like the the training options and all these things. And like, you know, I mean, I fancy myself knowing a little a little bit about them, but probably not enough, obviously, to make really great decisions right away. I have to think about it a bit. So. Um, that's also another uh, bit of learning uh, for me too, is just kind of like, just start with the defaults. Like, what am I doing? Like, why start with like tuning things? You know, just go with the defaults and I'll tune later. There's even an easy function for that. It's just like a setting. Um, so I'll, I'll just show quickly the uh, training. I, I, don't even, I, I don't even have this on my repo uh, just because it's literally the doc example. The only thing that is different is just we labeled things a little bit differently. And then we sort of imposed like the number of images to choose. And everything else starting right here is 100% the doc example, except for uh, the model type. So uh, no big deal. And that's why it's not in the repo. Um, but I will, oh yeah, I think we have that. Somebody has that, but they'll share. I just have this, I wanted to share uh, the models um, so that you could try it for yourselves. Uh, and you can test, like, if you have a cool backyard where you have, like, a bunch of animals. Like, my friend uh, has, like, raccoons and cats and stuff coming in her backyard, and she has a camera, so she'll send me pictures, and I've been trying them out. It's really great. Um, but so uh, we got a model out of it, obviously. I was going to show my Linux machine working, but my remote desktop was failing with all the other things going on. Uh, but, you know, I, I used... Uh, I, well, I use my Linux machine has a pretty good um, NVIDIA uh, Titan card, so that helps. <laughs> and my laptop has a GPU too, which I do deep learning. I need GPUs. Um, and but anyways, the, this is that was really helpful to get it going. But also, I think um, Joanna, maybe even Cleve, had run uh, so, to some extent just on the CPU. So it's also very reasonable. Don't don't think you have to buy a bunch of equipment to be able to do this. You also could use uh, cloud for this too. That was my big vision in the beginning. I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to do all this cloud. And then it was like terabytes of images. I'm, you know what? I'm just going to do the old fashioned way and plug it on in and uh, start there. Um, so anyway, if you can t you can um, check this out. So feel free and uh, I mean, contribute if you like. Um, but I just I put the couple of models that we had. So the 40 animals that uh, Cleve has in the article and then <laughs> the weird sheep experiment I was trying and the bear not bear. So um, if you want a bear detection. And also, eventually, this was Connell's idea. Well, I mean, I kind of thought of it too, but uh, <laughs> was to deploy it so that we could actually have like, you know, my friend's camera could real time, you know, uh, send her a message whenever um, it's actually a cat or it's like the really, really big raccoon that eats all the cat's food. Yeah, anyway. it, 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 this is this is totally a cool ThinkSpeak project. Uh, so for people people you know, that, that don't know what ThinkSpeak is, ThinkSpeak is MATLAB's uh, uh, IoT platform, which which you can use for, for 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 fun projects like this. So send yourself a text message when there's a raccoon in your backyard. I guess that that, that, that could be a fun project to work on while in quarantine. <laughs> All right. Um, hey guys, by the way, anyone on the team? Connell just volunteered uh, to help us with our deployment aspect. Yikes. Um, it's okay. It's not that hard. <laughs> It's just a GPU coder app. You're fine. <laughs> Don't make it sound hard. <laughs> but anyways, you can try this out for yourself. So, and you can play with it. And if you do something cool, let us know. Um, if you get to, uh, if you get to it before we do, because um, that would be awesome. I would love to have a little app that also just like, like, ooh, is that, you know, whenever I'm traveling, I don't. Like, I guess I should probably know the difference between like elk and like all the things with like horns or whatever. But you know, it'd be kind of cool to have a little app on your phone for that. Um, so anyways, I, I'll just kind of show, like, if you want to use it, I, I just put like the list that we used. It's not, it's not in the repo. So, uh, but just put wherever your files are located. Um, and you know, codes all here, this is just all exact again, pretty much exactly from the doc example, copied and pasted. Um, and th this is the one I won't run this right now. Cause I ran it on my Linux machine earlier, but, um, I just grabbed, I think how many, 
a hundred from each class just to test quickly. And uh, it was about 90% accuracy. Oh man, I'm not gonna be able to pop that out. Oh, I should have saved it. Um, it. Actually, we could probably pop over to Cleve's article real quick. Um, Cause he, he uh, talks about a couple of really interesting um, sort of misclassifications. So um, there are some that, you know, so ideally you want to have this uh, line down the this diagonal, you know, that means armadillos were classified as armadillos, right? So, um, you know, if you kind of take a look, it's like, oh, wait, 57 birds were classified as doves. Doves are, I, I didn't know there was a difference. You know, so um, those are the things that, you know, I think that's where your domain expertise and like that's where, you know, Jim and his team, um, actually, I should probably Professor Sanderson or Dr. Sanderson, um, but I guess we've been uh, familiar, but, uh, you know, their team would go and say, hey, hey, maybe we shouldn't be labeling these, like we should be labeling by phena <laughs> genus or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I wasn't ever great at biology stuff. Um, it's a lot yeah. of memorizing. That's why we words. became engineers, right? That's why we became it's a engineers. lot of words, man. I like math. I like typing code. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> <That's Yeah. my laughs> so, so Heather, I, I just want to, there, there, there's a question in the chat about, sure. uh, uh, do you need to retrain your model for say backyard data versus the Southwest data? I'm not sure I understand the question too well, but, but, but uh, do you, do you want to, do you want to take a stab at that? Yeah. I, so I, I think for me, like, um, if you have, I mean, the more like diverse data, the better, you know, if, if you wanted to classify, like say you did want to make that app where you're just walking around and you wanted to make your backyard app, you know, if the uh, picture or if the model is always expecting like a tire or like watering hole in there and you don't have a watering hole, you know, it, I don't know. I mean, the, the context uh, can matter. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to speak too much for it, but I would try to get it as diverse a background as possible. So you could also, we could have a little like, all right, somebody do this actually. Um, everyone just submit all their random animal images that they take on vacation or in at zoos or in the Southwest of orcs is the yeah. crazy. Um, that would be cool. Like that would give you the most sort of um, animals in their habitat, you know, at least in my opinion or okay. expertise, not expertise, <laughs> educated opinion, I'll say. Um, but yeah, that, I think that's a really good point because that also kind of gets to like, you know, will will it, you know, dark and light matter? And it, it didn't. <laughs> like, I was absolutely shocked that some of these things were like, what? That was the classification? Like that, I have no idea what that thing is. Um, so, you know, it, it, the context does matter, but I do think, you know, a, a good model should be able to pick it up uh, without all that. And you can also do some image processing or, or um, like augmentations and, uh, you know, things like that to try to uh, differentiate or diversify the backgrounds. Um, yeah, the, or... the, the, uh, the, the, the image augmentation functionality in, in that doc example is actually pretty great because they, they, they use these data stores which can help manage the, the large data sets and then just sort of add different filters to, 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 to your data set so you can get a more diversified um, data set, if you will. Yeah, um, even like, I think, is it this one? Yeah, so uh, augmented, yeah, the yep. So you can even try that here. You can change, that, that happened a lot actually in the past. It was trained with um, all like RGB and there were a couple that were black and white and it was throwing things off. So that's a great way to do things, especially also if you don't have, like that was one strategy that I hope we can do with uh, the um, few, or the classes with few images. Uh, you know, like Joanna had pointed that out earlier, you know, maybe we only have like five of these things, but we could also, we could always, you know, make it a much larger data set if we augment. Um, so, you know, that's, that's another, that's a good strategy too. If you want to, if you only have a few backyard picks and you want to uh, use, well, you know, train it well. Um, a couple, I, I point out just a few interesting things. So I, I don't want to, I can't like pop this out well. But this one is a, a snake. I had originally I shared a, a couple of uh, results and I was like all excited and there's this big email chain and everything. And people were like, uh, there is no way is 100% sure that is a snake. That is like 5G or dude. Like what is wrong with your thing? Like MATLAB's dumb. <laughs> uh, no, dude. Okay, so here, it was so interesting. I love this so much. All right. Oh, that was the reveal. Okay, pretend you didn't see that. Okay, hopefully you were blinking or you were doing something else. So um, 
if you look, you know, like if you would have zoomed into that image, you would see all these little deer, everything they're cute. Um, and I looked at a ton of these and they just kind of look, there's a snake right there, right? There's a little snake. And so like, it just kind of looks like the part of the crate or, you know, or grate or whatever over this thing. And um, I had looked at a bunch of them. Oh man, it showed up way better. Oh, my lens is shaking. Uh, here it is, yeah. But so, you know, there's a whole bunch that are, uh, you know, oftentimes, I guess I, I maybe also uh, Jim or Grant or somebody can clarify it, but like, um, you know, the uh, camera or the pictures are taken when there's movement, right? So uh, the snake seems like pretty lazy, if you ask me, and just chills all the time, like in the same place <laughs> for like months, apparently, uh, if I look at the date. But, um, you know, I, I don't imagine that it's moving much. So it's not going to get a lot of pictures of just that little guy unless it moves or, or gal. Uh, or MB. Um, so, you know, there's deer now. So now we have a sneak picture. So it would be really, really interesting how on, you know, thinking about that, you know, in terms of the models, in terms of, you know, classifying multiple uh, animals and things like that. But man, that is good. It took us a long time to even catch that that was there. So I was pretty impressed. Um, oh, and the uh, reason, the only reason I even saw it was because of the dark eyes so i was scrolling through and i was like well, no way that is a snake and then it popped up and i was like ah, that's definitely a snake and i was surprised that there weren't more deer running away at all times maybe they didn't notice it either um so that was one thing the other one whenever i did uh the dog or uh, bear not bear it was really interesting because it misclassified dogs pretty frequently which makes a lot of sense obviously if you look at that you know uh, who knows? Uh, so, you know, it, it was it was really very reasonable. That was another thing that gave us confidence that, you know, okay, it's, yeah, it's 50-50 right now. It could be anything. Um, so that all seemed very reasonable. Um, so, so Heather, we, 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 have, we have another question in the chat mm -hmm. uh, talking about um, is, is this training using bounding boxes? Um, and uh, how, how does it perform if fresh images, uh, you know, if, if, if the subject sort of changes position in, in, in in a new image, uh, how is how is your network able to identify that? Um, that's a good question. So it doesn't use anything. It's not. Um, let me go back here. There's nothing implied at all. Uh, it's just it just uses the images as is. There's no you know uh, imposed bounding boxes, um, and the images are actually I I at least I believe they're not all the same size. Like you, we resize them like the uh, total. Um, pipe and width. Um, so I don't think they're all completely consistent. Um, but it was quite good at uh, try as at recognizing even just like a little piece of an animal. Um, I guess I don't know if that helps answer. Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I, uh, another thing to, to, to point out is what, what we're doing here is, is this is a classification problem rather than object detection, you know, typically bounding boxes are associated with object mm. detection because you want to figure out where in the image um, that particular object of interest is. But uh, in our case, we're just Good classifying, point. you know, we're just sort of classifying an image as to whether there is a bear or a cat or a dog or, 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 or what have you. Um, so so, so ho hopefully, hopefully that that makes a little sense. And, and we, we definitely have support for um, for for object detection images as well, so they, they're they're obviously a different set of of neural networks that you can you can take a look at um, on 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 the MATLAB deep learning pages. Yeah, even some I was thinking too that just reminded me of the um, image labeler apps too. Like yes. that would be good for like next you know if you have more images that you want to do. Oh my gosh, I'm terrible yep. at this now. Um, but there's the image labeler. Uh, you can just kind of draw a little thing around it, and then it'll. Oh my gosh, I can't open it right now. Too much stuff to look at. Uh, <laughs> but that'll really help too for like future um, stuff. You know. Yeah, the the the, the, Im the, the image labelers are definitely some of my favorite apps. In fact, uh, I I did a video on how to use uh, custom automation algorithms with with the image labeler. So I can pop that in the chat. You guys can take a look at that. Uh, so awesome. it, the, 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 the custom the custom algorithms are nice because you you basically train a model and then have your model keep labeling more images for you, which is it sort of removes the manual aspect out of it. Especially with something <laughs> like this where they're they are actually moving around. So exactly. you know yep. you can see them kind of move through the shot. You know, um, you would save yourself a lot of time. Well, maybe maybe they're interns and they they I don't know get paid yeah. uh, to just <laughs> look, look at pictures of. 
um, animals. Also, Jim, if you need an intern, I'm yours. Um, <laughs> I, I told Joanna many times, I'm like, I, I kind of want to do this forever. Like go out in the woods and like in the <laughs> wilderness and like classify animals. And I love them so much. <laughs> Um, but they don't need me because they can just use a dog example, <laughs> apparently. Um, so uh, I just wanted to point out this other, this is also in the repo. So I have this test labeled one. So this is like when I'm test, you know, I'm passing in many, many images just to get a good sense. But this is one I, I tried to make a, I'll probably just make a little app, but I ran out of time. Um, but I tried to make it easy for someone to just like type in their own stuff and choose the type of network that they want. Um, oh, let's try to shoot. Uh, okay. Um, and you know just type in like where your location or like what images you want and how many and stuff so uh anyways this is where we just can try new ones so you see that little cow is not a bear um let's try a few more yeah that's not a bear it's a cow and a dog that's a bear is sitting in the water <laughs> I love them so much. Um, so anyway, the, you can run this for yourself and try out your backyard uh, photos and let us know if it works. Um, and yeah, the models are are there on the uh, repo. So I guess uh, just a couple of things. I you know I'll take a look at some of the questions and we can chat a bit more. But like some of the things that it, I was thinking about because this is this was really exciting and it was super awesome. We had a lot of success just right off out of the bat or right off right out, out of the box. All right, I don't know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I've been talking for a while. Um, but so something that's super easy, which I had already done, but I just didn't get it together uh, to share is just hyperparameter tuning. So you could do, um, you know, once you have those, you know, I was, that also replaces like my value in the project being the expert. Um, but, you know, you could just you know, choose a couple of different parameters, like the batch size is the, you know, um, uh, gradient descent rates and things like that and um <laughs> like, like let optimization figure out which ones are best so that's that's a pretty easy one that you don't have to think about um but more things to actually that are more interesting to think about would be like like you were saying connell like trying to use that like image app um or even just you know ourselves i think um uh, jim at one point there was a uh there were some mislabeled images and the number of animals and some of the images were wrong and they were in the wrong folders. So we had to exclude those, but I thought hmm, we could just train a model to detect the number of animals in the image and we're good, um, solved. So I'll get on that soon. <laughs> uh, but that was one of the things that I think would, would be, because we all already have that from the uh, folder uh, directory names and things. So it should be fairly easy. And I, my GPU is getting cold and that's unacceptable. <laughs> um, so, and we mentioned too, like some kind of augmentation, especially for, you know, those animals that don't have very many classes, um, you know, maybe even adding more somehow, uh, naturally. Uh, and then of course, you know, we, we went with 40 and then, uh, you know, we wrote the article and tried to, you know, try to, I don't know, figure out what, uh, to do next. But so, you know, ultimately, you know, the, we can uh, see what Jim wants to do with that, um, but try to recognize all of the animals. You know, I was hesitant to just say, yeah, go ahead, um, but why not? <laughs> Again, my yeah. GPU is getting cold, let's just try it. Yeah. And I did try 64 and it worked totally fine. So um, we're getting there. And I think that's also a, a good, it was really good learning process for me too. It's like um, a lot of us, you know, use these example uh, sets that have maybe a couple gigabytes or like, you know, whatever, whatever you can have sensibly in the dock. Um, but, you know, there are some serious things to think about whenever you have terabytes to work with, right? So for one, who do you know that has a GPU? Hey, Heather, I'll be involved. Um, but, you know, th that is a question, you know, and how do you even approach that? Like, if we would have just started with the 40 animals or just even with uh, half of the images, it would have taken weeks probably. So, you know, just that uh, notion and like Joanna and I spent a lot of time initially talking about that, like what even makes sense? Should I try like a hundred images of each class? Is that even enough? Um, is, you know, like, does that make sense? Like, do I need to start with a thousand? Um, but it was actually, I think, especially going back to the transfer learning uh, topic, you know, I think, especially since we already had a totally legit model, you know, we didn't have to do too much to it. And it was, it was fairly easy to just scale. Uh, and obviously the code is literally the same. I just pop over, scroll lock twice and enter, I pop over to my Linux machine, 
uh, pool code and I'm good to go and I can, you know, bust it out on multiple terabytes. And uh, to answer one of the question, I have um, Titan XP, uh, I think still, um, GPU and uh, two in my Lance machine. So, and it's right here. It's, it's very good to me. I don't use it for gaming ever <laughs> at all. Just kidding. It's really good for that too. But that that's very helpful because I, I was able to even use my laptop because I have I have a you know a quadro on my laptop and um you know that that's pretty helpful to get a you know fast idea. So like whenever I was just starting with like a hundred or so uh, images, you know I, I could just run it on my laptop. Joanne, I could just run it on hers. You know, no big deal. Um, so you know we uh, sort of sensibly scaled, I guess, based on hardware and like uh, problem knowledge or knowledge of our objectives. So I think I think that also, again, is a, is a really good lesson for approaching these kinds of problems. And, you know, if we talked about, a lot about GPUs, but uh, it's very, very easy to um, run your MATLAB code on, uh, you know, Azure or AWS. So you can always rent some, I suppose, uh, for a bit if you don't have access and you can get really, really, really good ones. Um, and, you know, that's an easy way. Actually, uh, we can share in the, uh, you can share the link in there, but it's just the, it's on GitHub, but it's MathWorks reference architectures. See, I use it all the time. It's right there. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's also a really good way to approach these problems. Um, cause you can use uh, parallelism, um, with as many machines as you like. Um, so I guess. We'll pause, I guess, for a few, a bit more to see. Oh, I think Connell has uh, gone. So I'm all alone with everyone here. Um, but I don't think there are too many more questions. We'll, we'll uh, hang out for a few more minutes here uh, to make sure. And I'm very willing to talk about this forever, <laughs> for a very long time, uh, and keep doing this over and over again and seeing what animals uh, come up with. Oh, this is our bear, not bear. Um, but so I, I guess I think some of the big takeaways here are the, uh, you know, just try it, you know, like don't overthink it. Don't start with like, oh my gosh, how are we even going to approach this? It's going to be horrible. Like really, really, really. We had so many images, so many animals, like this huge, crazy problem and a doc example, a pre-trained model, a little bit of discussion with some experts in various fields, like domain, not even experts, just people that work in in uh, their domains, a team, you know, and we're able to get something very reasonable. And uh, hopefully, you know, Jim and the team will be able to do something totally amazing with this and, I don't know, find some new animal or make that app we were talking about so we can uh, go on vacation to the Southwest and uh, find some nil guy. Uh, or the little pigs, I love those things. Um, is the model share flexible? Can we adapt it to any particular scenario with few tweaks or and modifications with acknowledgement. Um, yeah, so that's one thing that's important, I think, is uh, when you're bringing in, you know, a lot of these pre-trained networks, it's very, very easy to get to bring it into MATLAB. And then um, in the doc example, it goes through, you know, these, there's some code to find the layers. You know, there, there are some great uh, links to more information about, you know, what layers are actually um, changing. Um, but the other thing is the uh, the uh, deep network designer will also can also help with that. Where if you find that you need to make more tweaks, there uh, you can kind of double click and uh, adjust things and try it. But ultimately, you really need the the final layer, uh, the, the last. It's like the uh, last layer is the classification layer generally, um, and that's the one that has. You, know, you definitely need to lab have your labels there, uh, and then but depending on the network, you may have to tweak, you know, maybe one or two layers. Uh, but in terms of, I think there's also a nice stock example using um, one of the importers uh, for you know TensorFlow, Onyx, and uh, in those cases, you can you know uh, replace. There's uh, methods or functions uh, for the layers you can replace and uh, modify the layers very easily. And again, definitely check the doc to uh, to make sure you're not kind of overdoing it at first. Um, and oh yeah, I wanted to also mention about this one really important. Connell mentioned it a little bit earlier about the image data store, where we can uh, you know we we talked a little bit about this with augmentation. 
Um, but one thing that was super interesting is that uh, at first, you know, actually Cleve spent a lot of time working on the uh, file directory parsing and, um, you know, naming conventions and things like that so we can make sense of it. And one day I just did image data store on the entire like drive and it found every single image and I could have just started from there. The only thing that was that we really, really needed to uh, adjust were the file or the labels and some of the, uh, you know, some of the ways it wasn't 100% consistent through the whole thing. So it had some trouble. And then we also wanted to um, get the uh, get a list of the images instead of passing everything in like that seems well, just not terribly sensible. Um, you know, to pass every to have every single image in your uh, pointer, and then want to only train on like say a thousand of them. So uh, we just imposed like some decisions in the beginning and did some excellent string parsing things uh, to uh, just come up with a list that we wanted with the right labels and the right um, you know directory uh, or path. So um, that's it's really really nice because you could pass the labels if you want, or you can just get them from the folder name. So that's what I tried at first. And like, there were just a few that were a little bit off because um, the last, well, and also the folder names like ended with 01 or 02. So those, that was, um, that, that would be great for the number of animals that we classified. But this is definitely very, very powerful. Definitely check this out. And you can pass it straight into the uh, um, deep learning functionality. There's also uh, generally data stores like for just regular old text files and things like that, that really help you manage, like obviously, you know, terabytes of data, um, you know, very easily and sensibly. And then you can read one at a time. Like there's some code you'll, you'll see if you uh, grab from the repo um, and hopefully I'll share more as I have some time. Um, and you can, you know, try this out for yourself. I, I, I think another important thing to talk about with the data store is the read function. So for example, if you have to perform like, you know, some key processing, you know, resizing your images, et cetera, et cetera. You don't have to do it image by image. Um, you, you can just put, stick your little pre-processing code into the read function, and then it'll, as it's creating the data store, it will, it will perform those operations on, 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 the, on the data. So, so that's definitely something we'll work on. Exactly, yep. And so, yeah, if, if we, and eventually if we decided to crop something or maybe we wanted to add, like I thought about adding a the um, tag for the time of day, even just like night or day, or something. Um, if I wanted to add that tag, I could, you know, add that in the read function. If we had, uh, you know, again, some kind of specific pre-processing that we really wanted to do, you know, if you didn't want to throw away all your knowledge, uh, just try some deep learning, you can uh, put that in the read function. And that, and that's much more efficient, again, thanks to all the dev teams, uh, than just, just looping yourself. Um, oh yeah, and so I, I guess I heard Connell. Maybe you guys didn't hear Connell, but he was he was uh, mentioning about the the read function. So if you had extra pre-processing that you wanted to do, uh, you know, as you're reading them, like image by image, you don't actually need to do that in a loop. You can just uh, put that in the image data store, and it'll just apply it very efficiently in the background. And especially again, if you have parallel computing, you have multiple cores, it it just brilliantly distributes things. So uh, for sure, check that out. That'll help yeah. a lot with these. All right, so I don't, um, okay, there was one more I just saw. Is there an API within MATLAB to decide amongst the different classification algorithms? That's a great question. Um, yeah, so actually uh, it was, there was one that's really easily, I think it was uh, R2020A. So it was just introduced. Um, oh my gosh, fit C auto. Uh, is the name of the function, fit C auto. I'll put it in the, uh, well, one of the chats so somebody else can put it in the chat. Um, but that'll just go through basically fit all of the models and tell you which one. Um, the other thing is the, is using the apps. You know, I, I don't have enough patience to have more things open right now, uh, but those are really great to uh, try everything. So like the classification learner, regression learner, um, the experiment manager. Oh yeah, that's a really good one to mention. But That'll really help because you can, um, you know, put, uh, you know, try several different ones. Like, say we wanted to use, you know, not just Inception, we wanted to try, you know, some other one, and uh, we could use Experiment Manager to, you know, try them all and then go back and compare. So that's that's a really uh, good question. But yeah, fit, uh, Fitzy Auto is the name of the function to just do it all. All right. So I think that 
wraps up. I've been, I did go a little bit longer, um, but hopefully you're enjoying it as much as I am. And I really hope uh, to come back and talk more about this. We, we've learned so much and uh, there's a lot more to learn and it's super fun. And I love looking at all the little uh, bears and all the fun little, fun little guys and gals. Um, so thanks again for joining. Uh, if, you know, keep in touch uh, on, you know, social media, we'll have, um, you know, you have the links to share the code and uh, we'll yeah, try it out for yourself and see uh, if you have a bear in your backyard <laughs> or a raccoon or a no guy or something. <laughs> and Connell is going to get on making that app for you so that you can just do, we should do it on the MATLAB website and uh, have like a, just a real time. We'll find out who has the best backyard yeah. and uh, just have real time detection. Have I been volunteered to do it already? Is that, is that what's yeah. happening? <laughs> Everybody heard it. Everybody heard it, like millions of people and all of YouTube. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, we'll, I guess we'll wrap up. Uh, thanks again. I really yeah. appreciate it. And I uh, hope to uh, carry on with this and hear more from you. <laughs> See ya. Bye.